Okay, so this is the microorganism. Okay, that bring disease. Okay, any microorganism that bring the disease, we call it as pathogen. So what about uh, the characteristic of pathogen? Okay, they live and breed in hosts and disseminated through feces. They themselves are very small in quantity and their presence is hard to detect. When it comes to the indicator microorganism, so I think the properties have already been mentioned, okay? It can be used for all type water, whether this is for river water or even well water or lake water. So you, whatever you see the indicator microorganism, it's, it means that you also have pathogen microorganism. So they are always present when pathogens are present and they are always absent when the pathogen is absent. They are easily experimented and give reliable results because they are abundant in nature. There are quite a lot, but they themselves are not pathogen microorganism. Right, we have a few types of uh, pathogen microorganism. The first one, uh, basically the, the, the typical one is the coliform uh, groups. Okay, coliform groups. So the coliform groups, this is kind of bacteria. The coliform uh, group is divided into two. Okay, the fecal coliform. The common one is the E. coli. And the second one is the total coliform. Okay, and this total coliform consists of the fecal coliform and soil coliform and any other kind of coliforms. So basically, if you, if you see an E. coli in your water, you can be pretty sure that your water contains some kind of pathogen microorganism as well. So how is how do we determine okay the amount of uh, indicator microorganism present in water? Okay, there are two methods to determine the presence of the indicator microorganism. So there are two methods. The first one is the membrane filtration method, and the other one, if you don't fancy the membrane filtration method, you can always use the most probable number method. Membrane filtration method is faster than the most probable number. So this one takes a little bit longer compared to the first method. So for the time being, is that okay? Okay. Great, okay. Right, so I'm going to touch on the membrane filtration method. Okay, membrane filtration method. I think there are blank for your equation so should you have printed the notes then you may complete the equation with this formula okay so uh, the formula basically the colonies okay uh, this is the concentration or the density of the colonies colonies in 100 ml is equal to number of colonies counted times 100 divided by the volume of sample again i say it again because this is a sunday afternoon that we have a lot of agenda to do in our life suddenly you've got to attend a lecture i repeat it again okay number of colonies counted so you need to count something times 100 divided by the volume of sample so it seems to be quite simple experiment to be conducted right so with that i would like to uh, go back to my whiteboard so stop sharing okay stop sharing right if you want to know the how to do the how to conduct the membrane filtration method so the first thing is to get a bottle okay this is a bottle i think i want to use a green bottle it's greener it's better for your environment i suppose okay so this is a green bottle does not matter but you get a water sample from this river so you take the water from the river and put it in a bottle and you must know the amount of uh, the volume of the water itself let's say the amount of sample that you take from this river is 100 ml okay so you know the volume and then what you need to do is to bring it to the lab okay bring it to the lab and you do a filtration process okay this is a filter paper Okay, so the water from here, so I'll draw it again, my bottle. I know that it's probably not clear because it's green in color. So this is the sample. 
So you filter them. Okay, you filter the sample. And this is not an ordinary membrane paper. And so not ordinary filter paper. But it is a membrane filtration paper. So is there any color to use? Okay. So this one is a membrane filtration paper. The size of porous is between, it's actually less than 0 0.45 micrometer. Can you see my handwriting? Is it clear for you? Great, okay. Right, uh, right. After you filter them, then that paper, the wet paper, you need to put it in the, in this, in a dish, okay. So I forgot the name of the dish, but that's not matter. It's a dish, okay. And the dish contain agar. Inside here, you have an agar. Agar is like, it's like agar agar, lah, okay. So it's agar, and it contains nutrients for the bacteria. This dish, okay, with paper and containing agar, need to be put in a incubator. Okay, so you, I think you've heard about incubator before. So this is an incubator. It's not a house, okay. This is an incubator. So this incubator is just in case that you don't know about incubator. Okay, it is like an oven, but the temperature for this experiment is forty-five degrees Celsius. Okay. You need to keep this uh, dish with that paper at temperature 20, uh, 45 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Okay, for 24 hours. That means for one day. Okay, so if you put it uh, in the incubator at this time, okay, so tomorrow evening that you need to take out this uh, dish. Once you take it out from the incubator tomorrow, Okay, after 24 hours, and then you will be able to see something like, can I draw it here? Okay, still, okay. So this is the dish and this is the paper. Okay, the paper does not shrink, okay, but, okay, it is, stays as a size. But you'll be able to see the colonies. This is what we call it as the colonies. Okay, so you have to count the number, those colonies. Satu, dua, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four. Okay, I say it again, okay, you need to count the number of colonies that is present on the paper. You guys are writing down, right? Oh, okay, so I give you time for a few minutes. <laughs> 